Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So a Tuma got buffed yesterday and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at his damage pre and post buff with and without synergy teams and kind of my general thoughts and obviously explaining the base rotation as well. We're going to be using my rank 3 sig 20 6 star Tuma and uh, to showcase his pre buff damage without synergies and his rotation. Here we go. Uh, so the base idea with the two main an average fight would be you want to drop like a couple of level ones first. So you want to drop a level one and then drop a few heavy attacks. And then you want to build up to your level two as quickly as possible. Atuma is a champion that does require you to be basically like super aggressive and super fast because there is timer watching and how many concussions you have on at any given moment is super important. So here we can see that after first level one, we gained like three of the hydration passives. We quickly converted them with heavy attacks into uh, concussions. Now there, I accidentally dropped my level one tiny bit too late, but it's not going to make a big deal for this fight. Uh, we again drop another heavy here, get a couple more uh, concussions up to nine now. Now we are rushing all the way up to level two and finally we are kind of like getting into a decent damage territory where we have some cruelties where we get that precision passive and we get also passively unstoppable for as long as we are at 19 or 20 hydration and that is also the time for you to be aggressive basically whilst you have 20 or 19 hydration hy hydrations you can be as aggressive as you want then when you go to 18 and below typically you will want to convert whatever is remaining into concussions and basically kind of rinse and repeat situation there i'm going to be going here for level two ideally i would have been able to squeeze another heavy attack to get those last hydration passives working for me but again being super aggressive is kind of like the most important thing for a two minutes also one of his weaknesses without a doubt because any match any playstyle that slows you down for instance uh you can't attack freely and you need to wait out some annoying debuffs or well not necessarily debuffs but some annoying phases like uh, miss mechanics on champions and things like that it can really really be uh, detrimental to a tumor so he performs best in any matchup where you can remain super aggressive and once you are ramped his damage is kind of decent the problem is it's not amazing it doesn't feel like you have cashed in on some sort of winning trump card uh, even we, we can see that before the buff we are plenty ramped up there is still the damage there are yellow numbers they're not extraordinarily large there are red numbers they are not extraordinarily large now once you are ramped up decently you can drop your level three to kind of cash out your ramp a bit this will reduce your ramp up because you are unable to pause your concussions and then getting to level two will be slower but that bleed is quite massive and i did a ton of fights with uh atuma i did really a lot of fights with atuma and i think this one was the fastest one that i did pre-buff which was uh two minutes and 42 typically the fight time was approximately three minutes using rank 3 atuma against the winter soldier so moving on to the next clip with the synergy team and uh, there is one very cool synergy i believe it is with toad which lets him gain hydration passive whenever you parry it gives you a chance to gain that hydration passive and that's actually super useful because you can get concussion extra concussions because of it uh quicker and it kind of helps you to extend your damage loops as well other than that because it is super important to get your special attacks as quickly as possible i actually just run two power combat power rate synergies in order to increase a tumba's combat power gain and uh, that helps you get quicker to your level ones level twos whilst more concussions are active and with that uh, it's easier to ramp him and get bigger damage numbers faster so it is like a super important thing about it too much because of the way concussions expire and because you want to be as aggressive as possible with this champion you do want to make sure that you use specials basically as frequently as possible and now at this point again uh here like 40 hits in this fight we are ramped up very well we have 20 concussions we have our precisions we have cruelties we are dealing reasonably good damage uh because of extra damage that we do on every single hit at this point now that we have gotten to uh, this point where our unstoppable expired we need to convert our remaining hydrations into more concussions 
and uh, at this point I'm gonna well I did end up going for level two I might as well possibly would have been faster if I went for level three but uh, I'm gonna leave that for the next set basically and again whilst you have 19 or 20 hydrations you want to be as aggressive as possible because that is when you're gonna be critting the most that is when you're gonna be critting the hardest because you will have your cruelties active and then once you do do drop below that basically you want to cash in your hydration and use a special attack and it's kind of like a rinse and repeat cycle now at this point i do go for the level three here get 20 bleeds on this winter soldier with 5k plus attack which is not too bad and obviously we still do somewhat decent damage here even without the cruelty passives and that winter soldier is going down and this is about as fast as i managed to do this fight pre buff with the full synergy team which was two minutes and 13. So two minutes and 13 isn't awful i would say but it is with the synergy team and that synergy kind of helped a lot now moving on how he does in shorter fights pre-buff again he is quite tricky to play and these type of deadpool fights are pretty much perfect for a tumor because you can punish heavies with your heavies you can punish specials with your heavies which is very very important and also deadpool's special animations are quick so there's no long wait time but uh, here we can see the base rotation your level one then after that level one just drop a couple of heavies and then we are going to go for another level one now that we have three concussions active and give us nine hydration and again do the same thing basically just cash in as quickly as possible convert as many hydrations as you can into concussions and uh, now we are at level two and we just need to drop that now that we have gained cruelties those concussions are paused sweet we do have some cruelties we have that precision we are dealing more decent damage keep in mind this is with class disadvantage as well and here we have very cooperative ai again and now yet again we are converting our hydrations into more concussions and now we can see you know decent numbers 9k 9k crit 10k crit and here we are just trying to finish off this fight as quickly as possible and with that one minute and 16 and that is with class disadvantage against deadpool though it's not the greatest because we didn't have any abilities to mitigate his region we had class disadvantage and even though the help pool wasn't as large definitely this fight looks kind of underwhelming but uh where atuma does do slightly better it's kind of like the medium length fights i wouldn't say that he's great for long length fights because there's like a limit to his ramp up but in a medium-sized fight he is better than in short-term fights because you do spend significant amount of time ramping him up like level one level two then get to level two sorry level one level one level two then you need to weave in your heavy attacks in between and it takes time and after your first level two is when you actually start dealing damage and after your second level two is when the damage gets even better if you remain aggressive the entire time and maintain your concussions so kind of weirdly saying i think that you know i, I don't think a tomb is great for like lovering level health pools or abyss and i don't think he's great for battle guns level health pools i think he would want you know slightly longer type of fights to be in his element that said however obviously we're going to need to take a look at how he does after the buff and how much that has changed here we can we have done the two level ones level two we are baiting out the level one from venom duck we can see that venom duck at this point was at half of his health remaining but it is going down relatively quickly there and the entire point is i just want to get back to my next level two and with that i will be able to pretty much finish off the fight now 18 concussions which is going to give me plenty of cruelties we change that to 23 by converting my last hydrations so now i get in much more and this is like when he does his best damage basically unfortunately it's a bit too late for most fights however when you look at the time difference 139 is still relatively solid ish for a 200k healthful opponent obviously then the update comes and we need to know what's changed basically now he starts so this is after the update now the, all of those were pre buff stats and these are going to be post buff so with the update he starts with one concussion active that did change some of his timing slightly and most importantly improved his chance of his talican skin to activate from 15 percent to 65 percent which primarily makes him 
much more dangerous as a defender, but it also somewhat helps him offensively because you do get more of those red numbers triggering easier. And here we are. We have six concussions basically after the first level one. So I'm going to throw in another level one here and we're going to be, you know, at much decent spot. We are converting them. Now we have 10 concussions. And the biggest difference is that previously from one level one, you basically got three hydration passives. After the buff, you typically will proc around six hydration passives, which does let him ramp up quicker to a point where the first level two is already significantly more meaningful. In some of the fights where you do get lucky and you get two concussions at start or there are some extra debuffs involved, you can probably throw only one level one now. Unfortunately, in most fights, you will still want to throw two level ones, which is kind of the thing that I think they messed up. I think about should have given him perhaps a few more concussions at the start. Um, and then maybe tune some special numbers to a point where throwing one level one and then getting to a level two would basically provide you with a decent ramp up. However, here we can see that I am properly ramped and I have 46 concussions already. And this is again completely unsynergized the Tuma. And I'm going to drop my level three. And, you know, ideally I would have gotten to this level 3, three slightly quicker because that bleed is just going to absolutely destroy him now in a matter of seconds and we didn't really benefit from most of the bleed damage, but it was 157. So 157 is not bad because previously the fastest I did was 242. So it is a significant increase in speed. Obviously, he's still faster as well when we are using him ramped up. And again, this is basically the same synergy team. <clears throat> and the entire uh, point of this buff is, well, starting with the concussion enables him to start with a little bit of willpower healing as well, even though his regen rate is reduced whilst he, well, it's just reduced, period. Uh, but the one thing I wish they did with the Tuma is, again, make, make it so that one level one is enough if he's unsynergized. We can see that because of synergies, we actually got 10 concussions and we can basically go to level two immediately because at that point we will be getting enough hydration to go uh, unstoppable. We're going to have our precision active, everything else. Um, if his rotation would be level one, level two, and then level two, I think it would be much more viable. Unfortunately, in the vast majority of the situations without synergies, he still needs to go for two level ones before he drops level two. And here we can see 28 concussions already active. We are going to be dropping our level two here. And I suspect how this fight is going to work out now. I'm going to go for level three, I think, most likely uh, to finish this out or something of the sort. But yeah, the, when he ramps up, his damage is, let's say, above average or decent. Not good enough to justify the, ramp, the long ramp up on top of the fact that you need timer watching. Now, I did make a small blunder there, but uh, now at least I get to throw my level 3 whilst he's at 30 some percent health. And as we can see, that bleed is chopping him down extremely quickly. And this fight finished in 144. <clears throat> so it's e even faster than before. Perhaps the most important thing. How does he do in smaller health pools? The Balagans health pools? And the answer is, well, better. But in my opinion, not necessarily well enough. I think unless there are extra debuffs involved that can help him ramp up quicker, he's going to be relatively on the slower side for Balagans like help pools, even after the buff. And that is given an opportunity to be super aggressive. Because again, if you're fighting against, you know, some mystic defenders, their MD might be a factor, or if you're fighting against some nodes that do slow him down, he will not do well. Being super aggressive is a must for him. If you can't be aggressive, he's not going to perform at all. 
And yeah, so there is an upside though. And that upside is that with the change, he's definitely significantly more dangerous defender. That is without a doubt. I um, haven't actually gotten to fight one in Balgrounds yet. Here we can see that instead of 1 minute 16, we did it in 106. And we had very good AI here. So we cut down 10 seconds from this fight. And we're going to do even better on this longer helpful fight. And that's kind of like the point that I was saying where in super short fights or let's just call them short Balgrounds fights, AQ, war fights, stuff like that. He's, he's, he's not quite up to speed what would be expected of an offensive champion. I do think that saving grace for him could still be if he's defensively powerful enough, because there are not too many Atuma counters after the buff. And because of it, if you view him probably primarily as a defender, if he performs well enough defensively, and that is something that you know, I don't know yet. I can't confirm or deny that because I haven't seen or fought him enough in Alliance Wars or Balgrounds yet. This could be something that I revisit. But if he performs well enough as a defender, I think he would be relatively decent, you know, champion that's primarily focused on defense, but can, you know, work for you offensively in specific matchups or specific matters. Kind of like, you know, Sasquatch or Rintra is where 9 times out of 10 or 8 times out of 10, you're going to drop that champion on defense. Uh, but there will be some matchups a few times where you will bring this champion on offense and he will do well enough. Kind of like in a, you know, Mr. Fantastic type of sense. Uh, so it definitely still remains to be seen be seen but whether his buff overall is successful or not entirely depends on how well he's going to be doing defensively now because there is going to be damage that we take so this is something that i did this is my rank 3 6 star versus my 4 star rank 3 which is some power scaling that i quite often use in um, you know my champion showcase and guide videos and we can see that that damage back scales quite often and uh, he's gaining hydration quicker as well which means that if the fight lasts too long he is going to go unstoppable for a long amount of time here we can see that yeah the damage back is you know relatively substantial and it triggers again 65 percent of the time plus that concussion increases the chance of triggering it as well i believe and uh yeah every single combo we are taking some damage back now it triggers on block as well which makes him harder to fight because you can't parry stun him and if you can't hit his block, it's going to be harder to find openings for him as well. It's kind of like, yeah, relatively troublesome thing. And, and that is what I think of Atuma buff. Is he better offensively? Yes, absolutely, without a doubt. Every single fight duration got decreased. It was more noticeable, obviously, in longer fights. Not quite as noticeable in shorter because your ramp up is still effectively the same. Two level ones got level two. However, if he is good enough on defense, I'm sure, you know, people will manage to use him offensively here and there in favorable matchups, primarily against like science champions. If he's not good on defense, then he's just going to be left behind and forgotten. And, and that's the truth of this champ. If you're looking him offensively by himself, he's not good enough. If you're looking him as a whole package of defense and offense, then there is still hope for the guy. But let me know what you guys think, and I'm going to catch you guys later. Bye. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about...